Good morning, everyone, or good afternoon from wherever you might be joining. Um, it's always cool to be able to say that and, and know the reach that we have here at Pacifica and, and being able to be virtual and knowing, you know, right now, I'm sure we're, um, we're Zooming all across the country. So, so welcome to everyone. Um, my name is Nick Sabatino. I'm the uh, chief of staff out of the president's office. I also am uh, co-director of academic affairs and student services. Um, so I've been fortunate you know, over these last six months, which is somewhat difficult to believe, we've been six months to um, be able to work closely with Dr. Lee. Um, and so just wanted to just take a moment up top here to introduce a little bit about today um, and then get into to Dr. Lee's um, presentation today. And, and the focus of our town hall today is on um, Dr. Leonie H. Madison, our president and CEO, a report on the listening, learning, and connecting tour that she embarked on when she started here in October of 2022. Uh, and, and over these first 100 days, and really now, again, what's been six months, um, it's certainly been um, a busy time um, and one filled with a lot of transition and excitement um, and dialogue. And uh, she's really made her way across, as, as I'm sure all of you know, and opportunities to meet with her in different avenues, um, being able to make her way around all parts of the campus and hearing all perspectives uh, that we have here at Pacifica. Uh, and I can assure you she's listened. Uh, she's read every bit of feedback that has come in, heard all the ideas. She shared them out um, to help in processing them and, and learning more about what she's hearing. Uh, and she spent a lot of time reflecting. Uh, and there have been difficult conversations and challenges uh, and celebrations of achievements, and there will certainly continue to be all of those as we move forward. And today is sort of a marker as we she presents on what you know she took away from these first 100 days and then how now we're going to, to be able to move forward. Um, so thanks to all of you who shared with such openness in all of these meetings. Um, and it was all in the name of... Um, you know, a real genuine care about Pacifica and wanting to to make Pacifica all that it can be. Um, so today is an opportunity to share what's been learned, share about, you know, who we are, be grounded again in who we are, establish a vision for where we are going, um, and really the part that we all can play in getting there. Uh, so before turning it over to Dr. Madison, just a quick note um, uh, today, with any remaining time after the presentation concludes, there will be some time for Q&A. So if you want to raise your hand, whether in the room here or Zoom, raise your hand. Um, we can do some questions that way. Or if you feel on Zoom, just typing your question into the chat. That works as well. Um, so we'll see what time we have remaining. We'll try to keep to the hour here uh, scheduled. Appreciate everyone taking time out of their Tuesday to be here today. Good to see a nice crowd on Zoom um, and as well as in the room here today in, in Barrett Center. So with that, I will turn it over to Dr. Lee. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good night, <laughs> depending on where you're zooming from. Uh, so welcome. Welcome to each of you, and thank you for your interest in listening to the results from the Listening, Learning, and Connecting Tour. It is an honor when I am in this building. I feel a little bit of film in a faith-based con congregation. Uh, it feels um, sacred, it feels uh, embracing, it feels like I'm connecting with a bigger part of myself, so I, I do enjoy being in this space. I do want to thank everyone uh, I have met on and off campus over the past, Nick, sorry, it's seven months since I've been here. Uh, your support and guidance are deeply appreciated and I'm excited about what's ahead. Alright. Ready. So receiving feedback and understanding the experiences of all of those across the community and I'm pretty sure by now many of you have learned about my people first leadership style. It is encouraging to hear how we achieve our mission here at Pacifica Graduate Institute, especially how we emerge and grow from our challenges. So let me begin by sharing some what I call mission moments, featuring examples of feedback received from 
faculty, staff, alumni, the learners, and even the Santa Barbara County communities. But let me continue in the, in the interest of time. So as part of our renewed commitment to Learner First on the screen, which the, the feedback will pop up pretty soon, we received the uh, feedback from our learners. And these were learners who've experienced challenges along their learning journeys. And it has been such a beautiful uh, I would say view observation to watch them evolve when I first started here. Uh, the two comments that the uh, feedback that's featured on our screen, I've had several conversations and meetings with these learners who were feeling stuck. And to receive these feedback of how the experience so far over the last couple of months um, really have, it has transformed how they think and how they choose to move forward from where where they are. And it's it's really encouraging. So I do want to invite all of us as part of our renewed commitment to Learner First. And when we talk about Learner First, all of us are learners. This is a learning institution. We are part of a learning community. We have learners who are our customers, if you want to call them that. And we have uh, faculty staff and or even the board of trustees. We're all on the learning journey. And so um, I plan to increase communication with our faculty, staff, and students, and further expand communication regarding our learners' experience throughout their academic um, learning journey here at Pacifica. So now moving on uh, from these mission moments, I know many of you will agree with me when I say that we do live in a time where uncertainty is all we can be certain of. How often are we thinking about, observing from afar, or even up close, you know, the devastating realities of mass atrocities, climate change, and social and economic turmoil. How often are these dynamics on our minds, or top of our minds? When we think about these existential threats of our times and how they've produced extreme levels of human sufferings across every continent, like suffering has absolutely no barriers to where it, it um, impacts. And when we think about how this is threatening the social, political, ecological, and psychological systems upon which we depend, our global well-being is in jeopardy. And I believe that's because largely because humanity, we as humans, we don't realize what we're doing by breaking our commitment to ourselves. We've broken commitment with one another, and we've also broken our commitment and our promise to the environment. No corner of the planet is immune from traumas or the self-imposed unsustainable practices that we've developed and we've executed. I'm sure that many of us in this room today feel the gravity of these crises. Most of us individually and collectively experience a call to action during this period of ambiguity and peril. This is where I believe Pacifica Graduate Institute comes in. Our unique vision and commitment to integrating a depth psychoanalytical approach to research, scholarship, and real world applications appears our graduates to work with the deeper roots of what influences human behavior and shapes the psyche. Our motto of tending soul often in the world is how Pacifica originated and remains almost 50 years later. And I also want to remind us, or maybe I think it's important for me to state this, we're not shifting. We're not in the business of changing the essence of who we are. No. So I'd like to dismantle that narrative that we are somehow changing from who we are as a deaf psychology institution. That is absolutely false. In fact, if you recall on day one, my vision statement that I communicated to the Institute right on this stage is that I have a vision of making deaf psychology education accessible to all people, not only to the few. And it remains the same. 
So uh, on my first day at Pacifica, right on this stage again, I committed to a three-day, six-step transition into the Institute. For phase one and my first 100 days, which is now complete, I committed to listening to people across Pacifica to learn what the Institute does well, what needs improvement, and how we can work collaboratively to achieve our mission. With this presentation, we hope to accomplish four important goals and they're outlined on your screen. First, we will demonstrate why we did a 100 day listening tour. Second, we will discuss what we learned from this process. We have learned much from many and will continue learning as we lead this institute together. Third, we will share where we are going next and the priorities on my mind to reinforce the widely shared themes. Fourth, we will share how we will get there and what you can expect from these widely shared themes that I will outline today, what actions have been taken so far, where we are in the process, and what lies ahead as we continue towards the onward expansion of Pacifica Graduate Institute. The 100 days tour included over 30 listening, learning, and connecting diverse sessions and an online survey. I have absorbed so much information over the last seven months and continue to do so. We've heard from over 500 staff, faculty, alumni, Board of Trustees, the community, key partners, government officials, nonprofit, community leaders, our founder and his wife, and more. Additionally, we had some impactful conversations during eight virtual and on-campus town halls in December and January. We launched two online surveys and we've reviewed over 300 comments from 50 of our learners. A big thank you. As you can see, I was busy. I have met groups of students from across programs, staff, and core and adjunct faculty, including several meetings with faculty leadership and key partners around specific issues and areas of interest. We've walked around our ca the campuses I've introduced myself, dined with our learners and faculty and attended several learner presentations. We sat down with, as I said, our founder and his wife, listened to and engaged with the alumni. I have, we, and my leadership team was part of this. We had the high honor of touring the Opus Archives and Research Center. We attended uh, several um, offsite presentations, and I love and in this room I've enjoyed the Winter Wonderland uh, gathering, as well as our monthly Teamwork Thursday uh, all staff meetings. Through this process, we have learned that our stakeholders have an incredible consensus about our significant points of pride, pain possibilities, and priorities. I also want to pause for a moment to uh, say a big thank you to my transition team. I know Norma, our HR director, Norma Mesa is in the room today. Thank you. Diane Travis-Steve, who was the team lead. I believe she's online. Thank you very much. And also representing faculty, um, Dr. Glenn Slater. Thank you very much. And Nick, as always, thank you for being part of the transition team. And to some extent, I must thank our general counsel who keeps me in line. He also uh, was part of the um, transition um, process. So let's spend a little bit uh, of time here before getting into some of the themes and threads we heard across the listening tour. One of the key takeaways for me is the importance of grounding myself in who we are as Pacifica. And I hope to take a moment to remind all of us here in this room and those online 
about that today to remind us of how we came to be, the principles we stand on, the degree programs, and other educational training and research offerings we provide, teach, and learn to share as an impressive and numerous groups, a group of accomplished learners, educators, supporters, and professionals coming together from across the globe. I also want to remind us and encourage us to continue to hold on and for us to be proud of our rich tradition to the commitment we witness across all types of community members here in the power of what we teach and the potential to grow on the foundation of our vision. Our founder, Dr. Steven Eisenstadt, I salute him. He had a vision oh, almost 50 years ago. And when I asked him if he saw it, you know, a couple of weeks ago when I met with him, did you imagine that we really, he gave birth to an organization whose focus at the time was to tend to the souls of the veterans who were coming home from war. We have a totally different war today. How timely and relevant is it for us to expand the vision? Truly, we can make the psychology education accessible to all people. I know that some of uh, your values are heard while other struggles. Um, let me pause and me step back a little bit. I want to hold space at this time before I dive into the presentation. I acknowledge, I recognize. And I'm fully aware that many of you in this room, as well as those online, you've demonstrated and shared with me that there is like the fear of change is real. I understand and I get it. I also want to share my commitment and I did share this on day one. I will always respect your boundaries. If you're not ready to move forward, I will respect that. However, and we'll talk a little bit more about my role. I was, I, I accepted the position here because I truly believe in the vision that I shared earlier. And for that vision to come to life, we must change. We must transform from where we are to becoming an even better Pacifica. And so we'll invite everyone on this journey to come alongside with us and make Pacifica even better better and greater for the next 50 years to come. So uh, let's jump into what we've heard or what I've heard and we mean in the leadership team and, and some of the other committees that I've shared uh, my lessons learned to, throughout the listening tour. As I consider the notes from my meetings and study the insights and ideas that many diverse voices across this institute and external partners have shared. The following observations and conclusions took shape. The themes capture the voices of individuals across every faucet of our institute. They will serve as guideposts as we move into the strategic planning process and the next chapter of our illustrious history. In the broadest theme or the broadest terms, we heard a recognition that our future success across every dimension of our mission depends on how we value, engage, include, and cultivate the rich diversity of our campus community. Hearing a shared commitment from hundreds of students, faculty, staff, and community members in these last few months has made me op very optimistic for our collective Collective, uh, for our collective future. Pacifica is comprised of people we need to make deaf psychology education accessible to all people while ensuring equity, justice, and belonging on campus and beyond. I have identified six themes that we will use to build, as I said earlier, um, our strategic plan in the summer of this year and position us for a brighter future and the next steps we will take to get there together. So let's jump into the six themes. Over and over, people told us they are dedicated to our motto, 
of tending the soul in and of the world. I've heard it throughout every single meeting. <laughs> um, I've also heard that we're proud of our amazing grounds. So thank you to our groundskeepers who are in the room, uh, our beautiful campuses. So thank you to our facilities directors also in the room, our, our distinguished faculty, dedicated staff, distinctive curriculum, and growing alumni community. People told me they love our retreat style educational model. People also told us they were unsure of how our strategic plan, mission, and values were aligned. And that although we have a motto, we need to be clear about our mission, our vision, and values, and ensure that every decision we make is aligned with them. People told us we're doing great work worldwide and wanted those outcomes to be seen and felt right here in, in Santa Barbara County. This optimism is coupled with genuine concerns about the strength and stability of our foundation. Over and over, we heard phrases like, I had no idea Pacifica was a higher education institution. I always thought Pacifica was an elite group on top of the hill. I didn't know Pacifica graduate offered so many degree programs. I didn't know Pacifica had such a large enrollment. These comments from external stakeholders mean that the story of Pacifica needs retelling. Although we are indeed an internationally recognized higher education institution known for our education, training, and research in depth psychology, the reality is that what Pacifica has achieved, what we're doing, and our impact here in Santa Barbara County and across um, California is far too influenced by where we have been in the last 47 years versus where we are today in 2023. I heard from these diverse groups that Pacifica is, the, is at a very important inflection point. We have a strong foundation of academic excellence as well as growth and achievements on which we can build. We're proud of who we are, what we have achieved, and who we have become over the last four decades. I learned from these, excuse me, I learned from these discussions that Pacifica is well positioned for onward expansion. Many learners, faculty, staff, and alumni have expressed that they want to Pacifica to prioritize the retelling of Pacifica's story in an effective, compelling, and depth-oriented manner. That means it's time for us to have thoughtful conversations about who we are, how we differentiate ourselves from other universities, and why in 2023 and beyond, Pacifica's education matters to the world. We will roll out a comprehensive communication and marketing strategy for strategic planning in July. I ask for your support and involvement in this very important campus-wide initiative that will align our historic reputation with our 2023 reality and build a better and stronger foundation for our future success. So let's move on. So the first theme is the brand identity. The second theme, learner experience and career success. I'm so inspired by our learner's determination and resolve of our dedicated faculty and staff to support the learner journey. Learners told us they were drawn to Pacifica because of our faculty, our reputation, our cohort learning model, and the low residency structure. Learners shared their appreciation for our commitment to providing a quality learning environment. However, they were concerned that we're still delivering education as we 
have been for over 40 years. Learners shared that our cohort model was restrictive and that our curriculum and approach to learner experience and success are a little bit outdated. Learners told me that their time on, cam on campus was not always nurturing. Many were subjected to racist comments and actions in the classroom and on campuses, on our campuses. Faculty, staff, learners, and residents told me that the more work, that more work must be done to cultivate a richly diverse, inclusive, and welcoming campus. People told me that if they were Black, Hispanic, Native, Christian, genderqueer, trans, gay, bisexual, or had differences in their ableness, they felt treated as an outcast. This is not intended to be a complete list, but it demonstrates that Pacifica is not an inclusive institution we aspire to be or that we can be. So there's more work that we need to, to do. I strongly believe that diversity and inclusion are prerequisites to achieving a high quality graduate degree and or education. I also must share with all of us, hate speech, racism, and inappropriate behaviors will not be tolerated here at Pacifica, period. There's no rule for it. Over the past six months, I've reviewed our diversity, equity, and inclusion report, met with our DNI Council, and participated in the WASC interim report panel discussion. This month, I will present the DEI progress report and the next steps to the campus community, including our search for the first chief people and diversity officer. This search will be inclusive and include many opportunities for all of you to provide feedback on our candidates. I aim to have this position filled by the end of 2020, Q3 2023. When the call comes for your participation, please step forward and participate. And I do ask that all of us here on campus and, and those who are online who are part of the Pacifica community, please prioritize this. Making a serious and substantial long-term change will require that we invest in resources aimed at advancing diversity and inclusion within and across divisions in a manner that support learner success and outcomes. As many acknowledged, we must work to ensure that every learner have what they need, has what they need um, from us to achieve their own personal and professional goals. Interestingly enough, learners also shared their need for a streamlined end-to-end -end platform with holistic wraparound services, support, and tools to help them navigate their learning journey, fulfill their calling, and achieve lifelong success. Learners share that there's silo. There are quite a number of silos that exist amongst the matrix of programs that we offer here at Pacifica. They told me that they desire a streamlined uh, access to diverse academic tools. They're looking for deeper connection with their uh, the, um, cohorts. They're looking for connection with faculty and other learners across our programs. And currently, our matrix is pretty siloed and they have shared some concerns about it and are have offered some insights and ideas into how we might transform from where we are to where we need to be in order to truly meet our learners where they are. I am committed to holding myself and our leadership team in this institute for delivering measurable learner outcomes. We, we are a higher education institution, and I'm sure you all have been reading and watching, the landscape has changed. 
it has changed drastically. Um, the trends in higher education are becoming fierce, fast, and pretty challenging. And so if we want to continue offering the great education that we do, we must adapt to change and adapt to change quickly. The third theme, academic and faculty effect effectiveness. Pacifica's mission is rooted in the idea that education and research should meet the ever-changing needs of society. My conversations with faculty, learners, and staff always included comments from the faculty about our pride as a depth psychology institution, our dedication to the success of our learners, and our commitment to teaching excellence. These were strongly reinforced and validated by our learners. Our learners value the small learning community, our retreat style learning model, and the expertise of our faculty. I have learned about the lack of institutional support to expand the hiring of minority faculty, build new educational models, and try new advances in pedagogy and flexible modalities that meet the needs of our working adult learners. Our CFO and his team members informed me about our investment to modernize our classrooms to support faculty in their scholarly work. I have read, listened deeply, and responded with a work plan to the nine faculty omnibus resolutions that address faculty need for systemic, real systemic change was what they shared with me. And let me read the nine uh, resolutions that we're working on currently. So again, thanks to the faculty body for preparing this comprehensive and well thought out um, document. So the nine resolutions are compensation, contracting, contracting, ranking, and faculty review process. Number two, financial transparency and contract timelines. Number three, faculty workload and adjunct faculty contracts. Four, faculty development. Five, shared governance and institutional management. Join resolution of FAC and President's Council. Faculty number six, faculty representation and institutional decision making participate, participation. Number seven, institutional support, communication, and the structural organization. Number eight, the provost's office. Number nine, diversity, equity, and inclusion impacts on faculty and programs. The list is not intended to be a complete list. Uh, to address the kind of work that we that must be done to achieve the significant success necessary for Pacifica to move towards its stated mission. I also want to be clear that these faculty omnibus resolutions are being addressed and has and also much progress has been made thanks to our former provost, Dr. Peter Roycevich. Did I say it right this time? Okay, my accent and our current interim provost, Dr. Lorraine Divas Combi, faculty leadership and staff. Uh, I also will purpose this to, to say that uh, due to the scale, scope and importance of these issues, it has become clear to me over the past six months that more resources, diverse voices of our faculty, staff and learners and expert support are needed to develop improve and implement best practices and to report transparently the results to drive cross-divisional teamwork, communication, and accountability to move these initiatives a mile versus an inch. Okay, let's move forward. The fourth team, um, theme is organizational and employee development. One of the questions that was posed to me during this process, and I deeply appreciated the question from uh, an employee. 
what does it look like when Pacifica does its best work, does its best in its work environment and operations? Employees told me that when they joined the Institute, they expected a diverse, inclusive, and forward-thinking organization. However, they found we were not always welcoming of their race, religion, ethnicity, ident gender identity, sexual orientation, or ableness. Employees told me we do not do a good enough job of compensating, recognizing, and investing in our people who are at the heart of our mission. Employees told me that they want to grow their careers here at Pacifica Graduate Institute, but that we lack a centralized professional development and leadership tools to build a thriving campus culture. So it is time for us to re-engineer our current processes, policies, and procedures, and build future focus structures that fosters deep collaboration and belonging. Diversify our res revenue streams so we can invest in our people and leadership. And employees have shared that is, it is time for us to lean into a new shared governance system, a model and a structure that truly represents the voice of voices of diverse population across this institution. Employees have shared that it is time for us to leverage data to seize growth opportunities responsibly and seamlessly support our mission, vision, values, and commitment. Employees told me they want to see improvement in our diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging efforts. It's not enough to say we're doing it. Um, employees have shared that we must walk the talk if we are... <laughs> Professing and promoting DEI, it should be reflected in our leadership, in our faculty body, and in our workforce. Employees have shared that with us. Everyone missed our annual employee engagement events. And if you recall, we reinstated the holiday gathering last um, December. I invite your participation in our comprehensive review of all of our policies, practices, and procedures, where we will gather your feedback and prioritize needs and collect ideas. Let me speed it up. The next theme five, community and global partnerships. Many stakeholders brought up our location as a primary advantage for attracting diverse learners faculty, staff, and profitable partners across California for greater impact. People want to see us strategically expand and coordinate our partnerships to create better outcomes for our learners. Alumni share their interest in strategic knowledge sharing, training and development, and support services like mentorship. We heard from our partners that they too want to engage in deeper and more intentional ways with Pacifica. We have close access to many potential partners in vibrant and diverse cities such as LA, San Francisco, and San Diego. Those are ripe for research, funding, internships, transdisciplinary research, recruitment pipelines, and innovative learning. So I look forward to working closely with all of you to um, bring to life the shared aspirations. Theme six and last, I heard, and it's the transdisciplinary social research. I have heard much passion from our learners, our faculty, staff, alumni, and the community about identifying and developing our research priorities around solving real societal problems. We must create a task force to support the development of clear research priorities so we can contribute and continue to contribute to solving societal problems through culturally responsive solutions that address social health, economic, and environmental justice. We must begin pursuing funding. Ah, this funding will help to subsidize the growth of our research priorities. 
So let's move on from theme six, uh, our mission, vision, values, and commitment. Based on what we heard, our commitment would be a learner first institution. Again, learner first, who are the learners? All of us are learners. So as we reignite our organization and rededicate ourselves to the mission of Pacifica, we have started a process to examine the mission, the vision, our values, and our commitment statements. This is not an attempt to alter our depth-oriented foundations. No, it's not. But rather to see how we can better articulate them in ways that meet the current needs and better clarify to ourselves and outside entities who we are, what we do, and perhaps most importantly, why Pacifica. So where do we go from here? We will discuss the priorities at the core of advancing our vision and strategic plan. Most importantly, these priorities will provide determined focus on our bright future and the building of a stronger foundation for Pacifica to get there. As you are all aware, as a higher education institution, we all continue to face more and more competition for learners, for faculty, funding, alumni support, and more. With that being said, we must evolve. Continue to, if we want to continue to remain a premier institution, we must adapt to and stay relevant to meeting our learners' current and future needs. Needs. We are here for the learners. We're not here for ourselves. Our learners, they are a priority. All of us together help to our learners to fulfill their vision. That's why they come to us. They believe in our mission and believe that we can help them to fulfill their personal and professional goals. So if we want to remain a premier institution that equips learners to truly transform lives positively and thrive in a multicultural and increasingly diverse world, we need to understand what worked well to get us here today and look into the future to see what we need to adapt and innovate to prepare for our bright and better future. And for that to happen, we will just focus on the following six priorities that are at the core of Pacifica's vision and also will help over the next couple months as we transition into our strategic planning process. And the six priorities are one, elevate Pacifica's reputation. Two, evolve learner experience and their success. Three, enhance faculty, academic and faculty effectiveness. Four, empower organizational and employee development. Five, expand community and global partnerships, and six, establish transdisciplinary social research. So we have created a timeline of our strategic priorities. I would read everything that's on the uh, screen. Uh, what I will share is that over the past couple months since my arrival, we have achieved several goals. And um, again, they're on the screen and we have outlined where we're going. So currently we're focusing on things such as the faculty omnibus resolutions and the, the progress that's been made around that particular initiative. We've launched the student and the learner and employee survey that's being analyzed currently. In the, and this quarter also where we'll be focusing on the recruitment or the planning of the chief people and diversity officer and also in quarter two, our commencement will take place on May 27th. July, August, September, strategic planning process. This is where you're invited to come in with your ideas, your plans. We need plans. And we need to know how much it will cost. And we need your timeline so we can do everything in one year. So the strategic plan is a five-year plan. So we will work on the strategic plan together as an institute. You'll be placed on teams, and we're gonna talk about what that looks like in a little bit. And you will work collaboratively together to come up with the proposals. Not Dr. Lee driving this. I gave you the six priorities. Find a team, which one you're most connected to, get on the team and share your ideas. Your voices are important and critical in this process. 
So let's talk about, um, we have our achievement. We will send these slides out. I, I, I um, addressed some of them already, but we have some key achievements that we've worked on and we have some initiatives in progress and then what the next steps are. Uh, one of the other growing concerns since my arrival that I've heard is that we're totally reliant on enrollment as our singular uh, revenue stream. And so we will create an adaptive business model and the framework is outlined on the screen. What that looks like is currently our programs are offered residential style on campus learning. We're looking to evolve to offering online degree programs. Number two, we will grow diverse learners through strategic enrollment. Number three, we will reimagine Pacifica Online. And number four, which I'm really excited about, we will be pursuing grant funding. We've been working very hard through uh, the CFO's office, assessing Pacifica's readiness for grants. We're almost there. I'm excited. We've already identify some opportunities, but I can't share with you until I go through my other committees, but we're excited about where Pacifica is going. We were going to, I share, I believe a couple months ago, this is my Jamaican coming out, a couple months ago <laughs> about um, truly, uh, you know, sourcing for funding opportunities for our faculty and our learners to participate in research. And as I said, I'm just so really excited about the opportunities that we've identified so far. So I'll just Let's talk about our leadership team. I also want to share that I inherited a senior leadership uh, team members who were reporting up to the office of the president. These were individuals who were already in place when I got here. The leadership team based on feedback from staff, faculty, learners, and the alum was designed around the learners and their learning journey and what their needs are, as well as the Pacifica community. And so representing, let, allow me to share the members of the ELT and their roles. Representing faculty and academic excellence is Dr. Lorraine Devos Combi. She's our interim provost and the VP of academic affairs. Representing the full cycle learner journeys is Dr. Rika Taribi, and I'm laughing because that is a huge undertaking and she will be responsible for the entire life cycle of our learners, her department. Representing uh, alumni engagement, career services, which is new, and community engagement is Diane Travesty, our Senior Director of Alumni Relations. All legal matters go through Marvin Richards, our general counsel. All fiscal, IT, information systems, and operations go through our CFO, Larry Beyer. We have our chief of staff, who is the chief of almost everything in our office, is Nick Sabatino. We will create a new position for a chief people and diversity officer, all things all things having to do with the people, meaning staff, faculty, our learners, alumni, and cultivating a diverse, equitable, and inclusive culture. We also created a new position, uh, which is to support the transdisciplinary and social research initiative. And Dr. Peter Roycevich will serve as the senior director of transdisciplinary social research. Our strategic vision and leadership for the design and the promotion of best practices, as I said, systems um, leading the organization, ensuring that we're doing the right things, making sure that we are fulfilling our mission goals. I would like to share with you, oh, I'm sorry, Laura Lee Scott representing non-degree certificate training and community programs. Laura Lee reports directly to me. I envision that the academic Senate president and the student government president will also have a direct report in line to the office of the president, to myself. That is to come um, in, in the months ahead. Now let's go over to the reimagined governance structures. As a president who truly revalues the input of our people, beginning this month, I will launch the following 
three reimagined and new governance structures. The first is the President Advisory Committee, which replaces IMC. Uh, let me share with you how it works. So the president and CEO report to the board of trustees. They lead me. So the board of trustees lead the president. The president and CEO leads the institute. The executive leadership team provides leadership. They lead strategy, people, and departments. And I've just shared with you who the executive team leadership members are. Okay, so I'm, I'm taking some time to walk us through these structures because it is so important that we respect and honor the structures that are in place. So we have the President's Advisory Committee. We have faculty governance, lead faculty and program. We have a new, well, I think it replaces the President's Council, which is the co-op, the Coordinating Council, and they lead offices and operations. And the student government that's in orange, we will discuss that during the strategic planning process. They did submit a proposal and it is under consideration. I think it's very important that our student voices are reflective um, on our committees. I've talked, discussed with the board about inviting them in um, to share during our board meeting. So more to come on that, but these are the reimagined um, structures here, Pacifica. So I like to call the President Advisory Committee, I'm already calling it a PAC, we're a PAC team, and then the co-op and the executive leadership team. Or in January, January, February, this organization, our team, staff and faculty created a vision board. A big thank you again to Dr. Ever Evergreen Eriks uh, for the DPT program for creating this beautiful collage. At this time and in closing, I felt it was important. I know there's a lot of, I shared quite a bit of information with us today. However, I want you to imagine with me for a moment, this is our vision board here at Pacifica. We created that vision board. I'm pointing to it because it's, it's in front of me. Um, it represents images and texts submitted by our faculty and staff as part of setting personal, professional and organizational intentions for 2023. So I want you to imagine the onward expansion of Pacifica. Imagine where a Pacific, imagine a Pacifica where our transformed systems and structures support our shared aspirations. Imagine a Pacifica where employees, staff, and faculty wake up every day feeling inspired to serve each other our learners, and the global community with joy. Imagine a Pacifica that feels welcoming and safe when learners and the community and even our staff are here. Imagine a Pacifica where faculty feel supported, recognized, and rewarded for their scholarly works. Imagine a Pacifica where we are awarded funding to expand our mission. Imagine a Pacifica with a best-in-class career center that connects our learners and the business community to impact workforce and economic development directly. Imagine a Pacifica where the community, industry, and, global com and the global partners thrive because we provide them access to education, research, and training. Imagine a Pacifica where employees return home daily, feeling they have contributed to something greater than themselves. Imagine a Pacifica with a world-class faculty development center that supports academic innovation, faculty development, support, and teaching resources and tool. This summer, my office would lead the significant task of developing a new five-year strategic plan with an annual with annual operational plans, cross-functional teams, a funding model, and dashboard reporting tools to support the execution of our strategic priorities. My chief of staff, Nick Sabatino, will lead this effort, and all faculty and staff will be deeply involved in our commitment 
to maintaining and expanding Pacifica's mission by making our education accessible to all people. We will need your support. All support from faculty, our learners, our staff, and our alumni, including the board of trustees as well, to achieve our shared vision. So when we ask for you to participate, I ask that you please say yes. In the fall, we will present our strategic plan to the board of trustees, followed by a campus-wide launch. In closing, Pacifica cannot, and we do not have any desire to change the past. We honor the past. Pacifica will tr stay true to its DNA. And so I ask this community to join me. Let us make the psychology education accessible to all people. Thank you all for being with me today and for working together to expand our mission, our vision, our values, and our commitment. Thank you.